For today's video, I'm going to talk you through how to apply foundation. A question I always get asked is, do you do your foundation before or after you do your eye makeup? It is kind of personal preference, but I find if you're doing a smoky eye, applying glitter, doing a dramatic look, or if you're a beginner, I would recommend doing the eyes first, just in case you have any fallout and then you don't mess up your foundation. So I did my eyes first this time because I was applying glitter and now I can refresh the skin and create a perfect base. So to refresh the skin, I take some rose toner and I just apply that on a cotton pad and glide this over the skin. So this will cleanse the skin, remove any fallout, while also soothing the skin. And because rose water has anti-inflammatory properties in it, it also means we're gonna calm the skin down, making sure that it's prepped and ready for the rest of our makeup. And then we're going to apply moisturizer. And moisturizer isn't just about hydrating the skin. It also helps makeup to last longer because it gives the makeup something to hold onto. So it's a very important part of your makeup routine. As this was an evening look, I didn't apply SPF, but if you are gonna be out in the daytime, I would recommend using an SPF moisturizer. Now let's talk a little bit about the skin. So I have a problem area in my T-zone, which is the area across the forehead and down the face. So the top part of my T-zone is very shiny, and then working through the center, I have larger pores. So down the nose and on either side, I tend to have pores. And that's where my primer comes in because this is gonna help work with these two problem areas. So this primer actually has oil absorbing properties. So it's gonna help with that shine. It's gonna create an even texture and smooth the skin and also give the makeup something to hold on to, so it's gonna last longer. So your primer is like a helping hand to your moisturizer. So if you have any problem areas, use your primer to help combat any issues. So now the skin is prepped and ready to go. The main areas that I like to add coverage is underneath the eyes and also alongside the nose because hormonally that can be quite red for women. So I'm gonna be taking my concealer and I'm going to apply this underneath the eye alongside the edge of the nose because I do wear glasses, so I like coverage there. I also bring it around the nose because this area can be quite thin. You might find that you have some discoloration there, particularly for women. And then I also apply a little bit on any blemishes that I have. So this concealer is a neutralizing, brightening concealer. So it applies the coverage that you want while also brightening up the skin. And this is the main areas that I want coverage. Any blemishes around the nose, around the mouth, and underneath the eyes. But you want to make sure you're customizing this to apply the concealer wherever you need it. And then I'm going to take my foundation brush and blend this in. So this is a flat top kabuki. You can see all the little hairs and bristles that this brush has. And these are going to help blend everything out. So what I want to do is I want to pick up the leftover product that might be on the back of my hand. And then I'm going to do a woodpecker motion. The woodpecker motion is basically a stippling type motion where you're bouncing the brush off and on the skin. What we don't want to do is to put too much pressure on the brush or turn it on its side. You really want to keep at a 90 degree angle against the skin, allowing the brush to do its work. So bounce this off and on the skin to blend in that concealer. And then you can use whatever's left over from the brush on any other areas where you want a little extra coverage. And so then we can move on to applying our foundation because our skin is nice and even. When picking our foundation, we should always make sure to consider the tone, the shade, the texture, and also the finish that we require. So I'm going to be using an illuminating foundation because my skin is quite dry. What I do is I pump a little bit on the back of my hand. And I always usually test this on the side of my neck to make sure it blends because that's where I want to match. I want my face, my neck, and my chest to all match. And then I use that foundation all over the face, just applying with my fingertips to get it on the main areas. Then going back to that foundation brush with all those beautiful bristles, we're gonna pick up the leftover product on the back of the hand. We never wanna pump the foundation into the brush as this can kind of clog and damage the brush. Using that same woodpecker motion, working across the face. Once I feel I have the coverage that I desire, I am gonna take a setting spray and just to set this in place. This is a bit strange. This is a bit strange, but what I do is I spritz the skin now so we have set the foundation and concealer. That's gonna make sure that it's budge proof, it gives it a skin-like finish, and it's also gonna help it last longer. I do all of this before I apply any powders to the skin. 
That way our powders are going on a perfect base. So for powder, I either use a translucent powder or I use a tinted one. This is the L'Oreal True Match Foundation. So it is tinted, it's gonna give me extra coverage, but it's also going to set the makeup in place. And I'm gonna be using a powder brush to press this into the skin. So what a powder does is it sets the foundation. This means that you have more control over the finish. So if you want to, you can use an illuminating foundation and then set it in place with a powder. That gives you more control over the finish. It also helps with any shine control that you might have. And because this is a tinted powder, it also gives you more coverage and helps the foundation last longer as well. You never want to do too much swirling. You want to really press the product in to start with. This is just going to make sure that foundation doesn't move around. Though we have applied a setting spray, so that will seal everything in and just allow your powders to go on so much better. I'm then going to apply another layer of setting spray over the top of the powders and all the other products that I've used in my skin. So once I've done my bronzers, my blushes, my highlights, I then spritz the skin again, and this will bring it back to a skin-like finish while also helping to last longer. And you can check back next week if you wanna see how I apply blushes and contours and all that kind of stuff. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit that like button, and I will see you guys next week.